Hi, I'm Gurutzeta Guillera Roita, and I'm going to briefly discuss here the work I presented in my paper in Methods in Ecology and Evolution entitled Impact of Sampling with Replacement in Occupancy Studies with Spatial Replication. In this paper, I'm looking at one specific aspect of occupancy modeling study design. But let me first set a bit the context of this work. Occupancy, understood as the proportion of sites occupied by a species, is a state variable widely used in ecology. We all know that the species detection is often imperfect. That is, when sites are surveyed, species may remain undetected in some sites that are actually occupied. Imperfect detection can lead to a negative bias in the occupancy estimator, and to deal with this problem, Mackenzie et al. and Tyre et al. proposed a model to estimate occupancy that explicitly describes the detection process. The model is based on a discrete sampling protocol in which a number of replicate surveys are carried out in each sampling site. The model then describes the detection process at occupied sites as a series of independent Bernoulli trials. It is the information on detections and non-detections at occupied sites that allows the model to estimate detection probability and so to produce a better occupancy estimator. This replication is often achieved by visiting each sampling site repeatedly at different points in time. Another option is to use spatial replication, in which we would define a number of subunits within each sampling site and treat the surveys carried out in each of these as separate replicates. This is the type of replication that interests us in this paper. One of the basic assumptions of the occupancy model under consideration is that the occupancy status of each sampling site does not change from replicate to replicate. If this assumption of closure is broken, the estimator of occupancy may be biased. When working with temporal replication, the assumption of closure is broken if the species enters and leaves the sampling sites during the sampling season. However, if this movement occurs at random, the estimator of occupancy remains unbiased and what we will see is a reduction in detection probability. In a spatial replication, the assumption is broken when the species is present at a fraction of subunits, that is, the species occupies sites only partially. In their 2009 paper, Kendall and White looked at this case to identify the best sampling scheme in order not to have a biased estimator of occupancy in this situation. They looked at two possibilities, sampling with and without replacement. Under sampling with replacement, previously surveyed subunits have the same chance of being surveyed as other subunits in the site, and therefore each subunit may be surveyed more than once. On the other hand, under sampling without replacement, subunits can only be surveyed once. In their paper, Kendall and White concluded that the best strategy to use was to carry out sampling with replacement. In my paper, I re-examined this problem and reconsidered the general recommendation of sampling with replacement given by Kendall and White. So the question is, is it a good strategy to sample with replacement in occupancy studies based on spatial replication when the species occupies sites partially? In order to produce the recommendations, Kendall and White looked at a specific case in which all occupied sites contained a fixed proportion of occupied subunits. In my paper, I also consider a second scenario in which each spatial subunit at occupied sites has a constant probability of being occupied. This results in a variable number of subunits being occupied by the species. One can expect this second scenario to be more appropriate in many situations, as it does not impose a fixed number of occupied subunits within each sampling site. This will often be a reasonable assumption, as sampling sites are defined by the study and are therefore not intrinsically tied with a constant proportion of occupied subunits. In the paper, I used simulations and compared the performance of the occupancy estimator under the two scenarios as described when sampling is done with and without replacement. Full simulation results can be found in the paper and its supplementary materials, but let's look here at one example. First of all, let's consider the case where a constant proportion of subunits are occupied within each occupied site, as in Kendall and White. Let's imagine a study with 10 subunits per sampling site. These two graphs show the performance of the occupancy estimator 
measured as its root mean square error for different levels of subunit occupancy, from 1 to 10 occupied subunits per site. The lighter curves correspond to a study design where 6 subunits are sampled per site, and the darker ones to a study where 10 subunits are sampled. The simulation results confirm that, assuming the system is well represented by scenario of constant proportion, sampling without replacement induces bias in the estimator of occupancy. However, if we now look at the case of constant subunit occupancy probability, which can often be a more realistic scenario, sampling with replacement is the approach that introduces bias, and therefore, in this case, it is best to sample without replacement. So the main message here is that the general recommendation of sampling with replacement in occupancy studies based on spatial sampling may not apply for scenarios that are ecologically realistic, and therefore should be taken with care. It is also important to understand when the choice of using replacement is relevant. In this discussion, we have assumed that subunit occupancy does not change during the survey period, that is, species movement is slow compared to the duration of the survey. If instead we were dealing with a highly mobile species, the use of replacement would not make a difference. In the same way, if the number of subunits available for sampling is large, both strategies produce the same results. All this highlights that the choice of whether to use replacement should be made after considering carefully the characteristics of the system under study, including how the species is distributed over the sites to be sampled, its movement patterns, the number of subunits available for sampling with its sites, as well as the resources available for monitoring. The design phase is an important element of any study involving sampling, which, when carefully done, helps improve the value of monitoring programs.